Hey guys, how's it going? Connor here today at eTrailer.com. We're going to be taking a look at the Dexter Idler Hubs for our 5200 pound axles in particular. Now if you're wondering what type of Idler Hubs you need, the easiest way to do this is, is going to be to crawl under the trailer and look on the center line of the axle beam. On here is going to have a sticker with the manufacturer's serial number and usually the weight capacity as well. The weight capacity is usually going to be the best guide to help us selecting our idler hub. However, we can always contact the manufacturer with the serial number to get specifics such as bearing information and grease seals. So if you're wondering why you would be installing idler hubs on such a large 5200 pound axle, it's because chances are you're either looking to swap from hydraulic drum brakes or electric drum brakes to hydraulic disc brakes, which you can see we have the disc brake mounting flange here. Keep in mind the rest of the components for a disc braking assembly are going to be sold separately here through e-trailer. So swapping to disc brakes is actually going to be a huge improvement, especially for our larger trailers here. Number one, it's going to be a lot easier to perform maintenance because we don't have to worry about taking the hub off and then messing with the braking assemblies, which in my opinion is a little bit more difficult than it would be to just deal with the calipers which are used on most cars today. Now in addition to easy maintenance, our disc brakes are going to definitely provide a greater stopping power for our trailer, and they're also going to be more responsive as well. So our Dexter Idler hubs here, as we have on this trailer today, are going to come with a grease seal with an inner diameter of 2.125 inches. However, we need to check the outer diameter of our spindle to make sure that matches, because this 5200 pound axle could be fitted with either that grease seal or the larger one which measures 2.250 inches. After we measure our spindle here where the grease seal sits, or we've called the manufacturer to determine that we do in fact need the other grease seal, you can easily attain this here at eTrailer. So our Dexter Idler hubs here are going to come with both our inner and outer bearing as well as our grease seal and the races. It's also going to come with our lug nuts here. The only other thing we're really going to need is we're going to need grease so we can grease the bearings and install them on the spindle and lube everything up properly. We also have our grease cap here which has a plug for the Zerk fittings on our axle. Keep in mind this kit is available with the standard grease kit that doesn't have the Zerk fitting port. Now that we've gone over some of the benefits and features, let's jump right in and show you how easy this is to install yourself. To start our installation today, we need to get our trailer in the air. Now we're going to be using our landing gear legs, but if we want, we could also place some jack stands under the frame to hold it in there so it's properly supported. And once the wheels are off the ground here, we can go ahead and begin to remove the tires using a 19 millimeter socket. I do recommend removing both wheels on one side. I don't recommend doing all four at once just so we have that extra security there. So now we need to go ahead and remove the grease cap, which we could do with just a flathead screwdriver. We're just gonna get it in here, pry it between the hub and the lip on our grease seal. We may need to work our way around. Keep working your way around. You can take it off just like that. So once we have the grease seal off, there's gonna be a castle nut behind this grease we have to remove in order to allow us to pull our hub up. So we're just gonna take a paper towel here and get rid of some of that extra grease. There's actually gonna be a cotter pin here, which we need to remove first. So we're just going to take a set of needle nose pliers, try to get the cotter pin out of the way. So basically, you're going to bend the two tabs back, and we're going to try to straighten it out as much as we can. And once we get it straight enough, we should be able to pull it out the other side, just like that. And then, we come back with our channel lock pliers here, try to get a grip on the nut, shouldn't be on there very tight at all, so it should just be able to thread off by hand. And behind our castle nut, we should have a washer, which we see there. It should come out if we just take the hub off as well. There we go. We can go ahead and set this aside. So now that we have the hub off, we can even go ahead and remove our braking assembly. We're first gonna wanna cut our wires here for the electric brakes just like that. And now we can take a 15 millimeter socket and remove the five bolts that are holding our braking assembly to the axle. Yeah. 
Once those bolts are out, we should be able to remove our braking assembly. Have a couple more wires here at the back we need to take out as well. So now that we have our hub and drum off, we can go ahead and repeat this process on the other side of the trailer. So before we reinstall our new Eiler hubs, what we want to do is we want to make sure that there isn't any existing grease on either of our spindles here. So we're just going to take a rag and we're going to try to get as much of that off of it as we can. Now before we begin to lube our bearings and insert them into the idler hub here, the races are actually already installed for us, so we don't have to worry about that. But I do need to make a note about the grease seal. As you see here, this is going to be the grease seal that came with our idler hub. However, this is actually not correct. The inner diameter does not match the outer diameter of our spindle where the grease seal is going to ride. So we're actually going to need to obtain this other grease seal here. So just to show you what we were talking about earlier, we have our two grease seals here, which are going to have the same outer diameter. However, the inner diameter is going to be different. So we do just want to take a measurement on our spindle where the grease seal rides. It's going to be about 2.250, which is going to match up with this grease seal here, which is why we needed this one instead of the one that came with our kit. Now that we've verified we have the correct grease seals, we can go ahead and begin to pack our bearings and insert them into the either hub here. Now we're going to be using this grease here, which can be attained through e-trailer but there is no grease that comes with the kit. So there's two methods to this. We could use a bearing packer, or the easiest method is just to pack them by hand. And essentially, we just want to get the grease in between all the grooves here. So we need to do this for both the inner and the outer bearing. And we're also going to lube up the spindle before we insert our hub on. Now that we have one of our bearings properly lubed up, we'll go ahead and set it into the race there. And we can grab our other bearing do the same thing. This little tip here, we're just going to take a glob here, we're going to take one side of the bearing, we're just going to press it in there like so, work our way around, and we should start to see it come around up top. So now that we have our inner bearing in place, we can go ahead and install our grease seal. Before we do this, I'm just going to get a thin coating of grease on both the outer and inner diameter of our grease seal here. We don't need to really glob it per se, and we can set it in like so. In order to get it in place evenly, we're going to take a block of wood, 2x4 here, and we're just going to gently sort of hammer it in. We want to do that until it's flush with the flange on the back of our idler hub. Just like that. Now we're just going to go ahead and flip the idler hub over once we have a grease seal in place. We can install our outer bearing. Now it's ready to be put back on the trailer. So before we put our hubs back on, we want to go ahead at this time and install our brake mounting flange. We want to make sure that we have our two caliper mounting bracket bolts are going to be facing the rear of the trailer. So now we're going to reuse the nuts that came off our existing braking assembly. Just get these hand tight. And then go ahead and zip these down. So now we're going to take our 15 millimeter socket here and torque our bolts down to about 40 to 50 foot pounds. Now that we have our caliper mounting bracket installed, Go ahead and take some grease here. Just lube our spindle up nice and good. So now we can go ahead and take our idler hub here, set it on the spindle, making sure our outer bearing doesn't pop out on us. Just gonna push it down just like so. Push our outer bearing into place. Now we're going to take our washer here, slide it over the spindle. We can take our castle nut, thread that back on. Once we get this hand tight here, we need to go ahead and seat our grease seal in the rear here. Now in order to seat our grease seal here, we have two different tools we can use. We're going to be using a one and a half inch socket. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to tighten it down seat the grease seal, come back off. And we're just going to do this a couple times 
to get the grease seal of the seat evenly in place. Now, if you don't have a one and a half inch socket handy, we can use a crescent wrench or a set of uh, vice grips for this as well. That should be good. So now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get down to our final torque, which is simply just hand tight until we align the hole for our cotter pin. Then we can take our cotter pin Insert that into the hole there. May need to take a hammer just to tap it down a little bit. Then we'll take the other end of our cotter pin, just bend it back. Just like that. So now that we have our castle nut secure, we've uh, locked it in place with our cotter pin. We can go ahead and fill the hubs here. We're gonna be using some red grease, which is gonna look a little bit different than the green grease that we put in earlier. However, as long as you check the compatibility, there shouldn't be an issue. Basically, what we're looking for is the grease to start to ooze out of the outer bearing on the side there. Keep in mind, we do wanna rotate the hub while we're greasing it. Now, finally, we can go ahead and set our grease cap into position. We're just gonna be using a block of wood and a hammer to seat it fully. We want to make sure that we hit it in enough on each side so it doesn't go in more than one on the other and damage it. I'm just going to be hitting it until it's flush with the flange on our idler hub here. So it looks like we're good just there. So now that we have the grease cap in place, we can go ahead and repeat this same process on our remaining spindles. So now that we have all of our idler hubs installed, we can go ahead and begin to reassemble the rest of our components for our brakes, which is gonna be our rotor, our disc brake calipers, and then, our, and then our brake lines if applicable. And then that's gonna do it for the installation of our Dexter idler hubs here on our 5,200 pound axles.